Welcome back to Curious Pero. This video is a follow-up to my previous video, A Gringo's Three Weeks in Colombia, The Prep. And this one focuses on the actual logistics of booking international airline flights during the COVID pandemic, making hotel reservations and praying that the Colombian hotels will be open when I arrive, and setting up the domestic flights throughout Colombia, jumping from one destination to another. This video is also part of my series, Planning a Trip to Colombia During Uncertain Times. I am planning to go to Colombia at the end of May, this year, 2021. But first I wanted to look back at my previous trips before researching and selecting my destination or destinations in Colombia in May. Before we begin, please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your viewership and I don't want you to miss out. I will see you after the introduction and watch on. So my Colombian travel companion and I decided to start making reservations for my trip at the beginning of November. It was my goal to travel for three weeks, leaving the United States around Thanksgiving and returning to the United States sometime in mid-December. There were a few factors weighing on my decision on traveling. First, what are the COVID requirements going to be to travel to Colombia? What are the requirements to travel back to the United States? Second, if my flights became delayed or canceled a few days or weeks because of just everything being chaos, how would that affect my plans in Colombia? Third, how trusting could I be the resorts and hotels to refund my money if something happened? Remember, they had been closed for six months and money had to be scarce. Fourth, how trusting could I be of the Colombian-based airlines? who also were without passengers for many months. And I made reservations through them for my domestic flights around Colombia. There were a few things that I knew that I had to do to protect myself financially. First, don't use a middleman. I needed to buy directly from the hotel or resort from the airlines. I couldn't be go through a service uh, because they were out of business as well. There was a lot of scams out there and I really wasn't in a position that I could lose money as part of it and feel good about it. Second was to pay only with my PayPal account and my secured credit cards. I wanted to make sure that I did not have exposure of someone having access to my personal accounts or my debit card. I want to say a few words about cash, exchanging dollars for pesos and ATM machines. When I arrived at Columbia, I'm typically carrying only between about 60 and hundred dollars. After going through customs, I will take all but $10 and exchange it for pesos at the airport, at the exchange or the cambio window. The exchange rates in the airport are not good, but I'm only looking for enough in the way of pesos for transportation to my destination, possibly a small tip. While traveling throughout Colombia, my source of cash is solely ATMs. While I know there's a lot of discussion about exchange rates and charges, as a gringo, I feel that the value of the U.S. dollar is so great in comparison to the Colombia peso that I'm always doing just fine. A large withdrawal at a Colombian ATM is typically about 600,000 pesos, which is less than $200 U.S. 600,000 pesos goes a long way in Colombia. Again, I want to emphasize that most of the established restaurants and retail stores and other services, they take credit cards for payment. And remember, you never want to carry much cash while you're traveling abroad. So I decided to book my international airline flights first. I booked my round trip tickets from Miami to Medellin, Colombia on November 22nd and a returning flight on December 12th. As a U.S. citizen, it is required that I book a round trip when flying to Colombia. In one of my previous videos, I go through the COVID protocols, the Colombian Immigration Tracking App, and other requirements for traveling during the pandemic. The only difference between me traveling in the future in 2021 and my trip in late 2020 is that the PRC COVID test is now required on both ends, both going to Colombia and returning to the United States. 
I booked directly with American Airlines and due to the start and stop nature of the reservations at the time, I chose to pay for the additional cost for flight insurance so I could get a refund if necessary. Secondly, I booked my resort reservations at On Vacation Hotel Waida, it was $340, and two different Decameron resort properties. One on the island of San Andres called the Decameron Hotel San Luis, $820, and a second located in the coffee region of Quindio called the Decameron Panaca, it was $450. No, these are double occupancy rates. At each of these resorts, my travel companion and I stayed between four and five nights. I do want to make one note that the Decameron reservations included transportation, which was taxi service, to and from the airport. We had decided to go to all-inclusive resorts for several reasons. We weren't sure about the availability of restaurants and street food. Also, I'm not one to take my own food when I go on a trip. We had found that on vacation Hotel Waida was so remote that if we didn't eat the food at the resort, we would almost starve. They did have a small general store on site, but the food was only basic rations like Vienna sausages in a can and crackers. I had never been to an all-inclusive resort and in some ways it reminded me of taking a cruise on a boat. You eat on the boat, or in this case at the resort, you take excursions, and for the most part, you stayed at the resort. I paid for all three reservations through my PayPal account on my credit card. Third, and lastly, I booked the flight reservations. I booked a round trip on Avanca Airlines from Medellin to Bogota to Rio Acho. It would cost about $470, and that was so that we could go to the On Vacation Hotel Waida. I then booked a round trip ticket on Viva Air from Bogota to San Andres and back for our stay at the Hotel de Cameron San Luis. Then I looked for flights from either Medellin or Bogota to Armenia near the de Cameron Panaca. This is when I discovered Easy Fly. This small airline provides domestic flights on commuter sized airlines. The ones I flew on was there seated 52 passengers, and they flew to most of the cities throughout Colombia. For the Medellin area, they fly out of the Olaja Herrera Airport rather than the larger San Maria Cordova International Airport. If you remember correctly, that other the international airport's about 30 minutes out of Medellin. Plus, the flights are cheap. For a couple, it's between $60 and $100 and there's varying flights available throughout the day. With all these reservations completed by the 7th of November, now I just needed to wait a little more than two weeks. I had to get my COVID test 72 hours before my flight from Miami, and then I could enjoy three wonderful weeks in Colombia. I do have a few notes. One, due to Hurricane Iota hitting San Andres Island on November 15th, and taking out Cameron Hotel San Luis, I had to find a new hotel. The DeCameron people were wonderful. They redirected us from the Hotel San Luis to the DeCameron Aquarium. It ended up being an upgrade for us and it was magnificent. Secondly, the COVID protocols at all the hotels, restaurants, uh, airports, taxis, supermarkets, and shops in Colombia were very thorough. Coming from the United States, it was quite impressive to see how much the Colombians did to make sure everyone felt comfortable. Third, most of the places we visited throughout the trip were only about 20% full and not by design. There were very few tourists or Colombians traveling around their own country. The prices, as always, were very affordable. A gringo such as myself can easily feel like a king when visiting Colombia. The people are very nice, everything seems very inexpensive, and you feel pampered during your entire time visiting. It's an amazing thing. My next video will show you some of the beautiful places I visited on this trip, and then we will start to research future travel destinations in Colombia for my trip in late May of 2021. In preparation for this trip, I'm taking an online Spanish class from a company called Baselag which was recommended to me by another YouTuber, Life with David. I spend about $150 per month, 
with virtually unlimited Zoom classes. The classes are one-on-one -on -one with great teachers based in Latin America, most of which are from Colombia or Venezuela. If you are interested for yourself, please check out Life with David, as I believe he can get you a discount and makes a small commission to help pay for his content from Medellin, Colombia. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video and please subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you next time and don't forget, watch on.